Let us start with symmetry. It indicates that you can draw an imaginary line across an object and resulting parts are mirror images of each other. This figure is symmetric about the axis indicated by the line. Note that the left and right portion are exactly the same. This type of symmetry is known as line or bilateral symmetry. It is evident in most animals including humans. Look in the mirror and see how the left and right side of your face closely match. Another example, Leonardo da Vinci's Vitruvian Man showing the proportion and symmetry of human body. In plants, we have spider work with threefold symmetry. Also, this star piece has a five-fold symmetry. Note that if you rotate the spider work and starfish by several degrees, you can still achieve the same appearance as the original position. This is known as rotational symmetry. The smallest angle that a figure can be rotated while still preserving the original formation. It is called the angle of rotation. For the spider work, the angle of rotation is 120 degrees, while the angle of rotation for the baby starfish is 72 degrees. A more common way of describing rotational symmetry is by order of rotation. A figure has a rotational symmetry of order n. n refers to the fold rotational symmetry. If 1 over n of a complete turn leaves the figure unchanged. To compute for the angle of rotation, we use this formula. Angle of rotation is equals to 360 degree over n or the fold rotational symmetry. Now consider this snowflake. It can be observed that the pattern on a snowflake repeats 6 times, indicating that there is a 6-fold symmetry. To determine the angle of rotation, we simply divide 360 degree by 6 to get 60 degrees. Many combinations and complex shapes of snowflakes may occur, which leads some people to think that no two are alike. If you look closely, however, many snowflakes are not perfectly symmetric due to the effects of humidity and temperature on the ice crystal as it forms. Same goes with the starfish. If we're going to get the angle of rotation, we simply divide 360 over 5 as the number of folds, so we can get 72 degrees as the angle of rotation of the starfish. Another marvel of nature's design is the structure and shape of the honeycomb. People have long wondered how bees, despite their very small size, are able to produce such arrangement while humans would generally need to use of a ruler and compass to accomplish the same feat. It is observed that the formation enables the bee colony to maximize their storage of honey using the smallest amount of wax. You can try it for yourself. Using several coins of the same size, try to cover as much area of a piece of paper with coins if you arrange the coins in a square formation, there are still plenty of spots that are exposed. Following the hexagonal formation, however, with the second row of coins snugly fitted between the first row of coins, you will notice that more area will be covered. Translating this idea to three-dimensional space, we can conclude that the hexagonal formations are more optimal in making use of the available space. These are referred to as packing problems. Packing problems involve finding the optimum method of filling up a given space with such as a cubic or spherical container. The bees have instinctively found the best solution, evident in the hexagonal construction of their hives. These geometric patterns are not only simple and beautiful, but also optimally functional. Let us illustrate this mathematically. Suppose you have circles of radius 1 cm, each of which will then have an area of 5 cm squared. 
We are then going to fill a plane with these circles using square packing and hexagonal packing. For square packing, each square will have an area of 4 cm squared. Note from the figure that for each square, it can fit only one circle. So that's equivalent to 4 quarters. The percentage of the square's area covered by the circle will be the area of the circles over the area of the square times 100%. The area of the circles is 5 cm squared over the area of the square which is 4 cm squared times 100% that would give us 78.5%. For hexagonal packing, we can think of its hexagon as composed of 6 equilateral triangles with side equal to 2 cm. The area of each triangle is given by A is equals to square root of the side times the square root of 3 over 4. That will be our formula. So therefore, 2 cm squared is equals to 4. Then 4 cm squared times the square root of 3 divided by 4, we're just going to cancel out 4. That will give us square root of 3 centimeter squared as our answer that is only a one triangle as a one side of a hexagon therefore this will give us the area of the hexagon as 6 square root of 3 centimeter squared looking at the figure there are three circles that would fit inside one hexagon the whole circle in the middle and 6 one third of a circle which give the total area as 3 pi cm squared. The percentage of the hexagon's area covered by circles will be the area of the circles over the area of the hexagon times 100%. Therefore, the area of the circles is equals to 3 pi cm squared over the area of the hexagon which is 6 square root of 3 cm squared times 100 that will give us 90.69%. Comparing the two percentages, we will clearly see that using hexagons will cover a larger area than using squares. This is the very reason why the honeycomb of the bees is in hexagonal shape for them to have more space for their honey. Patterns are also exhibited in the external appearances of animals. We are familiar with how a tiger looks distinctive reddish orange fur and dark stripes. Hyenas, another predator from Africa, are also covered in patterns of spots. These seemingly random designs are believed to be governed by the mathematical equations. According to a theory by Alan Turing, the man famous for breaking the Enigma code during World War II Chemical reactions and diffusion processes in cells determine these growth patterns. Looking at a sunflower up close, you will notice that there is a definite pattern of clockwise and counterclockwise arcs or spirals extending outward from the circle of the flower. This is another demonstration of how nature works to maximize the available space. This arrangement allows the sunflower seeds to occupy the flower head in a way that maximizes their access to light and necessary nutrients. We are also very familiar with spiral patterns. The most common spiral patterns can be seen in our whirlpools and in the shells of snails and other similar mollusks. Snails are born with their shells called protoconch which start out as a fragile and colorless. Eventually, these original shells harden as the snail consume calcium. As the snail grow, their shells also expand proportionately so that they can continue to live inside their shells. This process results in a refined spiral structure that is even more visible when the shell is sliced. This figure called an equiangular spiral follows the rule that as the distance from the spiral center increases, 
the amplitudes of the angles formed by the radii to the point and the tangent to the point remain constant. This is another example of how nature seems to follow a certain set of rules governed by mathematics. Flowers are easily considered as things of beauty. Their vibrant colors and fragrant odors make them very appealing as gifts or decorations. If you look more closely, you will note that different flowers have different number of petals, just like for example, the iris and trillium. Both of them have three petals. Flowers with five petals are said to be the most common. These include the buttercup, columbine, and hibiscus. Among those flowers with eight petals are the clematis and delphinium, while ragwort and marigold have 13. These numbers are all Fibonacci numbers, which we are going to discuss in the next upload. Now let's talk about the world population. As of 2017, it is estimated that the world population is about 7.6 billion. World leaders, sociologists, and anthropologists are interested in studying population, including its growth. Mathematics can be used to model population growth. Recall that the formula for exponential growth is A is equal to PERT where A is the size of the population after it grows, P is the initial number of people, R is the rate of growth, and T is the time. Recall further that E is Euler's constant with an approximate value of 2.718. Plugging in values to this formula would result in the population size after time with a growth rate. For example, the exponential growth model A is equal to 30E raised to 0.02T describes the population of a city in the Philippines in thousands, years after 1995. Question, what was the population of the city in 1995? What will be the population in 2025? So here's the solution for the first question, what was the population of the city in 1995? Since our exponential growth model describes the population t years after 1995, we consider that 1995 as t is equals to 0. Now let us substitute the values. a is equals to p, which is the initial number of people, that is 30. Then the e, and the earth constant is 2.718 raised to 0.02 and our time is 0. Now let us process first the exponent. 0 0.02 times 0 is equal to 0. Then, any number that is raised to 0 is equal to 1. Therefore, 30 times 1 is just 30. Therefore, 30,000 was the population of the city in 1995. Why 1,000? It is stated in the problem we're going to describe the population of the city in the Philippines in thousands. That's why it is 30,000,1995. Now let's answer the second question. What will be the population in 2025? In this question, we need to find A or the population after it grows in 2025. To find T, we're going to subtract 2025 and 1995 to get T that is equals to 30. And then 0 0.02 times 30 is 0 0.6. 2.718 raised to 0 0.6 is equals to 1.6308. Then 30 times 1.6308 is equals to 40.924. And we're going to make that in thousand that will become 48,924. Then that would be the population in 2025. Now answer this one. The exponential growth model A is equal to 50E 0.07T describes the population of a city in the Philippines in thousands, T years after 1997. A. What is the population after 20 years? And B. 
what is the population in 2037? Comment your answer 